I'd like to call this meeting to order. Today is Tuesday, January 19th, 2016. We're here for the purpose of the regular meeting of the Elmhurst City Council. I'd ask that you will all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, it's, uh, let the record show it's uh, 7.50. Uh, Clerk Spencer, please call the roll. Deuter. Here. Sabatino, ac absent. <coughs> Leader. Here. Dunn is absent. Bram. Here. Polumsky. Here. York. Here. Toledo. Here. Healy. Absent. Levin. Here. Kennedy. Here. Honquist. Absent. Wagner. Here. Moliner. Here. Ten present, four absent. Ten present, four absent. Uh, we have a quorum. Uh, we are in session. On to uh, receipt of written communication from the public. At this time, is there anybody who has any written information they wish to submit to uh, council for review? If so, please raise your hand. Seeing none, we'll move on to public forum. This is an opportunity for anybody in the audience uh, to address the council on any item they so choose. Um, we had a sign-up sheet in the back. Uh, when you are recognized, we ask that you make your way to the microphone over here to my right uh, and uh, start by stating your name. Um, address is optional. We ask that you keep your comments to three minutes out of respect for work that we have to do here this evening and out of respect for other folks that may want to speak. Clerk Spencer, at this time, is there anybody who wishes uh, to speak at public forum? Yes, Mr. Mayor, and I'll start with Claude Pagash. 566 West Gladys. Claude Pagach, 566 West Gladys. Uh, I'd like to have the council give up on hiring consultants. <clears throat> you kind of put false hope in the minds of people that uh, something is going to be achieved. But I've been to a few council meetings and I found that there isn't an ordinance, a building code, a set of rules that this council at their whim can't adjust, change, modify, alter, and not even take into consideration. And if I look at the uh, treasurer's report, you guys spend an awful lot of money on consultants. It's filled up quite a few shelves in here collecting dust because it never seems to change the wishes and wants of this council in the least. So give up on it, will you? And you also got this uh, issue at your comment. Well, you guys folded on the garage. Park district got that. They're very sympathetic to the problems of the people. But then they look at all the money you've given away without a second thought. They went to everybody but. So I think their general attitude is let's get ours too. They got it with the maintenance garage. And you may or may not go along with this valve. But they'll bring up something else. And you got a lot more programs that got to be developed with them. And like I said, they're sympathetic. But sympathy only goes so far with them. They'll ask for more. And you still got to deal with the school district. They've got all kinds of wishes. So they look at if your partners can be at the public trough, they might as well join in too. And that fantastic idea of an indoor sports arena that they would like to have with you that you'll foot the bill for, because their general obligation bonds are right up to their neck. And since this town has flooded for the last 100 years, they kind of go along with the idea, what's another couple of years? 
these people have waited and listened to all the rhetoric. Nothing has been achieved but rhetoric. Mr. Pragash, I'd ask you to wrap up your comments. Yeah, Mayor. Question. You're going to replace the uh, water meters? Let's hope we don't wind up like Tenley Park. Jim Rogers. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. Um, at the direction of the Park Board, I'm here to, uh, to read a statement. This statement was shared um, last Thursday evening at the uh, Stormwater Subcommittee meeting. I was asked to share it so that we can be sure that the full Council has the opportunity to hear it. Uh, the Park Board remains committed to helping the City address stormwater flooding concerns in Elmhurst. As part of that commitment, the Board has been specific about its desire to ensure that any decision would not adversely impact Park neighbors. As a result, since October of 2014, the, bo the Board has, been, has also been on record in writing as being willing to agree to help the City to address the flooding concerns on Crescent, so long as the solution included an automated shutoff valve that would provide an increased level of safety and security for those downstream to help ensure that the problem was not simply being shifted from one street to another. The Park Board is well aware of the information presented by Burke Engineering and reviewed by V3 Engineering and remain steadfast in its position to require a shutoff valve that will provide an added level of assurance for those residents downstream, not only as it relates to today's existing conditions, but also as it relates to any future development. Finally, the Park Board recently removed a requirement that the City had already agreed to, to fund more than $200,000 in recreational improvements in York Islands. As a result, even if the valve costs approximately $100,000, the city will still be spending fewer of the taxpayers' dollars on this site than it had previously agreed to and will, as a result, be able to put that savings toward other stormwater improvements. At this point in time, the city has the IGA and has to decide if it wants to utilize your comments per the terms that the Park Board approved on December 2nd, 2015. Thank you. That concludes sign-ups, Mr. Mayor. Okay, uh, that's it for folks who signed up this evening. Is there anybody who did not have an opportunity to sign in on our sign-in sheet in the back of the room but still wishes to address council? If so, please raise your hand. We have one, or anybody else? Okay, please make your way to the microphone. Uh, state your name for the uh, record, please. Hi, my name is Kendra Thompson at 204 East Crescent Avenue. And um, I came here tonight with the thought of really not saying anything, but after uh, Mr. Rogers spoke, um, I'd like to say something. Um, I came here without wanting to say anything, but after two years of coming to countless meetings, park district meetings, council meetings, I've seen very little results. The only results I've seen are roadblocks, roadblocks presented by the park district. Disguise is what's, what's, what is best for the residents, or what's best for the city, or what's best for the parks. These roadblocks have become very old and very transparent. So again, my name is Kendra Thompson, 204 East Crescent Avenue, and I'm here tonight in support of the York Commons Attention Pond in hopes that I get to see it at some point in my lifetime. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Seeing none, we'll move on. That concludes public, uh, sorry, public forum for the evening. Uh, agenda item five, announcements. Any announcements? Alderman Molliner. I just like to announce uh, that Jim Caviton, our former deputy police chief, last Thursday was sworn in as the police chief in uh, St. John's, Indiana. Uh, that's a real telling tale for the city of Elmhurst that we've got great officers and they continue to move up and serve people. Okay, any additional announcements? Alderman York. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. On February 11th, the Elmhurst Memor uh, Memorial Hospital Foundation is um, putting on their annual Chef Fest. It's a great event at Drury Lane Theater. That's February 11th at 6 p.m. All proceeds benefit the foundation and the fine work that they do. And information and registration is available at um, emhfoundation.org. Okay, any other announcements? Seeing none, we'll move on to consent agenda. Uh, at this time, is there any item any alderman wishes to have removed? from the consent, consent agenda for further comment or to vote no. Anything on the consent agenda? Seeing none, I will now entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda uh, in its entirety as posted. Motion by Alderman uh, York, second by Alderman Mulliner. 
Clerk Spencer. <clears throat> York. Aye. Molander. Aye. Deuter. Aye. Sabatino, absent. Leader. Aye. Dunn, absent. Bram. Aye. Polemski. Aye. Toledo. Aye. Healy, absent. Levin. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Conquest, absent. Wagner. Aye. Ten ayes, zero nays, four absent. Ten ayes, zero nays, motion carries. Consent agenda is approved in its entirety. On to uh, agenda item seven, committee reports. Um, committee report, uh, agenda item 7.1. This is a report out of Public Works. I'd ask Clerk Spencer to please read the recommendation. It is therefore the recommendation of the Public Works and Buildings Committee that the City Council approve the subject right away vacation request and the 16, um, is that feet? 16, but yeah. 16 by 16 feet property conveyance request as shown on the attached drawing for no cost except for any associated attorney, survey, et cetera, fees incurred by the city and authorize the city attorney to prepare the necessary documents for council approval. Signed by Jim Kennedy, Chairman, Marty Deuter, Vice Chairman. Unsigned by Michael J. Bram, Patrick Wagner. Okay, to put this before council, entertain, I will entertain a motion to approve the report and recommendation as read. Motion by Alderman Kennedy, second by Alderman Deuter. Alderman Kennedy, report out of your committee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As was stated earlier, we met last Monday to talk about this um, vacation for the Ace Hardware property on uh, First Street. Um, three small parcels on there. Um, our typical approach to this is to first look at what 50% of the EAV is. That's approximately $25,000. Uh, staff presented to us that it, would these um, areas be put onto the tax rolls, it's approximately $9,000 of, of um, property tax uh, per year. So if you kind of look at that, it's two years and change, so to speak, before you get your, your money back out of that. Um, we looked at it, it's gonna make for a better piece of property. There are, one could argue, some liability sides to this as it relates to the city. Um, one thing that um, we did discuss in the, in the meeting was that there will still need to be an easement on that area for, uh, for utility access that will remain in there and that will be something I believe will be part of the ordinance when we ultimately uh, come to whatever agreement we do here. So. I'm in full support of doing it for zero value and look forward to, to see if there's any questions. Okay. Alderman Deuter. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just to add one piece, you know, the, um, <coughs> the applicant in this case made a request for city participation in some planned improvements to the site. Um, the piece that came to our committee is, is, is really the only piece we looked at, and that was just the piece related to the land adjacent to the hardware store. Um, I, I think it is, I, I think the majority report reflects the right position to take this part. These parcels have um, limited value to the city. They're remnants from development that happened. They were not strategically acquired or um, owned by the city. They were remnants of the development when the underpass took place and when the residential development to the north took place. Um, so very limited value to the city. There is a cost associated with it because we do maintain the parcels. The um, parcels only create access and use for the hardware store itself. Um, but I do think it's important that because this request was packaged as part of a um, larger request for city participation in these improvements, I think it is appropriate and um, the remainder of this request is still in front of the finance committee and I, you know, would expect that the Finance Committee considers our decision tonight when it evaluates the merits of the rest of the request for city participation in the development. So I, I think the majority <coughs> report is the right way to go on this, um, and I do think it's a package that the remainder of which will be considered by the Finance Committee. Thank you. Any other comments? Alderman Wagner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to make the point that I was unable to attend the meeting. I was out of town in business, uh, but I do um, concur with Alderman Deuter and uh, Alderman Kennedy and support the majority report. Okay. Other comments? Alderman Levin. Um, on the report, I 
support the report. Uh, Alderman Deuter expressed thoughts that I have had too. Uh, I do have a concern about uh, the fact that the applicant for this particular relief is also looking for um, relief and, or for assistance through a facade grant and relief through some sales tax abatement. And I hope the, uh, I, I initially thought I would move to table this uh, pending consideration by the Finance Committee because I see it as a package, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to support it and ask that the Finance Committee consider this, in my opinion, a kind of relief that's being given. Okay. Alderman Bram. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Essentially, uh, my uh, position on um, right-of-way vacations has been steadfast for my elected tenure. Property has value. It's as simple as that. Property has value. It's a city asset, a city asset that translates into a dollar amount. Our policy today, for those who are not aware, is Alderman Kennedy already stated, is based off of a starting point of 50% of EAV. That's approximately one third of what it would be market value, one third. So we're already cutting it by one third and then cutting it by an additional 50% and saying this is a starting point of dollars amount, dollar amount. I would love to be able to go and buy six, over 6,200 square feet in the city of Elmhurst for what I proposed in the minority report, $25,000. That's not including the 16 by 16 square in the back of the property that you know uh, this business has been utilizing uh, for their own benefit without paying property taxes for I don't know how long. So I did not in my calculations even add that additional cost. I threw that in as offsetting that 50% starting point that I have in the minority report. So uh, the policy, I think, and I said this in committee, already is very beneficial to anybody who requests a right-of-way vacation. We're not charging market value. We're charging EAV. We're not charging 100% EAV. The starting point is 50% EAV. Significantly different. Significant good deal for the business owner. And I'm not blaming the business owner. I would do the same thing. I would make the same request. So um, I don't want to be in that it to be interpreted in that light. This also gives um, this property, if this moves forward as is, additional value, property value. Yes, we'll be getting taxes, but it, they will increase their property value as well. So why shouldn't they be paying taxes on it? It's been utilized for decades without paying taxes on it, and it has. And there is a limited audience, I believe Alderman Deuter made a statement of, that you know, this is really only important for, um, in this case, Ace Hardware because of where it's located. But it still has value. Um, I think that the, the right decision is to charge for any property in Elmhurst. Uh, maybe not 100, but definitely not zero. Um, I think that to make statements of, well, there's other thing, other other proposals or other requests by this business in another committee and how that impacts this, I, I, I don't understand that rationale. And I'll explain that by saying each request has its own criteria and should be evaluated as such. A facade grant has its criteria evaluated as such. If that business owner deserves that <coughs> facade grant, then we give them either 100% of the request, 50% or more than that. Same thing with retail grant. It has its own criteria. They should be looked at one of the few times that something could, should be looked at in a silo because each request has its own criteria. This has its own criteria. To me, our policy says start at 50%. I think that's where I sat because I want to be fair to the requestor as well. Um, so at this time, I would like to make a motion to substitute the minority report for the majority report. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to substitute the minority report for the minor majority report. I, uh, to uh, entertain this motion, we need to require a second. Second by Alderman Levin. 
Okay, so now uh, we shift from motion to approve the report to actually substitute one report for the other. Um, additional comments, Alderman Bram, as it relates to substitution? No, thank you. Okay. Uh, question before council is uh, substituting the minority for the majority. Any additional comments or questions? Alderman Levin. I just want to make clear, I, I understand that the programs such as facade or retail grant, whatever, all are separate silos, but you, I, I think, would be prudent to look at them in terms of what the total package is. Obviously, if you're getting uh, a maximum in one category, you might decide you don't want to give as much in another category. That's the import of what I, what I was saying. It doesn't affect necessarily this point, um, but I want to be clear that I see them as a, it's really a request for an economic package. Okay, other comments or questions as it relates to a uh, motion to substitute? Seeing none, Clerk Spencer, I'm going to ask you to call the roll, uh, and I'll remind Council this is on the motion to substitute the minority for the majority. Uh, and I vote is to support substitution. Clerk Spencer. Graham. Aye. Levin. No. Kennedy. No. Sonquist absent. Wagner. No. Mulliner. No. Deuter. No. Sabatino, absent. Leader. No. Dunn, absent. Polumsky. No. York. No. Toledo. No. Healy, absent. Did I call everyone? Healy, did I call? Wait a minute, I'm losing my place here. Okay. The last one I called was Healy, then uh, they're all taken care of. Yeah. So I believe that's it. Okay, so that's one aye, nine nays, and four absent. Is that a correct count? One aye, nine nays. One aye, nine nays, motion fails. Uh, back to uh, Motion to substitute fails. Back to the original motion, which is to approve, approve the majority report. Additional comments or questions? Well, New York. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I kind of feel like the Finance Committee has been put under a lot of pressure here by people, um, but that's fine. We're used to it. Um, just to set the record straight, um, the applicant has requested a, a TIF incentive, um, a facade grant, which is administered by the Building Department, a retail grant, which is administered by a retail grant committee, which is a subcommittee of the Finance Committee, but really at the city manager's recommendation to the council. So that just leaves us on hook for the TIF incentive and we'll do the best job that we can. Um, I think just, uh, you know, from my perspective, um, something like this goes back and I don't, I can't remember if the Robert Palmer underpass was in the late seventies, early eighties, but this is something that goes back a long time ago and probably should have been dealt with at the time of the development. It hasn't been, I understand that. Um, but um, it, it's kind of hard to carry forward something that becomes basically useless to anybody else when it's not dealt with at the time of development. So uh, editorially, those are my comments. We'll, we'll certainly um, do the best job. This committee will certainly do the best job that it can in evaluating the TIF incentive. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? <clears throat> Point of order. Yes. Does this need to be a supermajority due to selling of city property? Uh, I don't think the report does. I think the, uh, the ordinance only. The ordinance will require it. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, uh, Clerk Spencer, please call the roll. Kennedy. Aye. Deuter. Aye. Sabatino, absent. Leader. Aye. Dunn, absent. Graham. No. Polumsky. Aye. York. Aye. Toledo. Aye. Healy, absent. Levin. Aye. Conquist. Absent. Wagner. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Nine ayes, one nays, four absent. Uh, nine ayes, one nay. Motion carries. Uh, agenda item 7.1, majority report uh, regarding Ace Hardware vacation is approved. On to uh, reports and recommendations of appointed elected officials. Uh, Mayor Morley, I will start. <clears throat> 
a couple of things, um, and then we do have uh, some additional information to post um, on the uh, on the screens above us. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the parking deck on Addison uh, is open. It opened uh, last Friday, uh, open for business. There will be an official ribbon cutting on the 25th at 9 a.m., Jim? Mm -hmm. 25th at 9 a.m., all are invited to attend. Um, second report uh, that I'm going to make, and then Alderman Kennedy's going to add to it, um, um, is uh, the, um, the Communications Committee, uh, which is a committee formed to have uh, park, schools, and city talk to each other about stormwater, met last Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to provide a brief update, um, uh, and anybody who has any questions or anything, by all means, please let me know. Um, this will directly relate to a, uh, an agenda item uh, further down on our agenda under resolutions, which I will not be participating in that conversation, except for clarification. But I will provide a little bit of a report this evening as it relates to stormwater and the meeting that we had with parks and schools. I'll start with schools first. Pretty straightforward. Um, Schools did attend. Um, school board uh, member um, Emily Bastido attended. A um, couple things to report. Madison contract, which I think everyone is aware of, is, um, is approved by both parties. Construction will start this year. Um, there's a tentative start date for the last day of school uh, at uh, the Madison site, although uh, school board has informed us that um, the kids who attend Madison don't actually utilize that field um, so that there is an opportunity for us to potentially start that project earlier. Um, if that's the case, we'll let everyone know, but our Public Works Department um, is working on the engineering now, and if we have an opportunity to start that project earlier and make it safe, um, we will propose that to the school and uh, maybe get started a little early. Uh, if that's not the case, the target date is um, last day of school, or maybe the day after the last day of school. Um, Brian, junior high, grab a lot. Um, the uh, many uh, different proposals were proposed to the school district about flood mitigation, uh, storing some water at Brian. Ultimately, um, the school said that they are committed to helping us with the gravel lot, which is the southwest corner of their Brian property. Um, this holds approximately 23 acres. We've talked to, we've had some conversations back and forth, Jim Grabowski and uh, Superintendent Dave Moyer. Um, we've really talked about it in a phase one, phase two type of project. Phase one is um, right now uh, the, part, the school district uses that gravel lot as kind of passive storage, um, gravel, maybe some old vehicle stuff like that, uh, really not active. Um, it's our proposal that we swap that use as quickly as possible over to uh, next to our parking garage, I mean our public works garage um, on Riverside Drive and allow them equivalent space uh, so that they're made whole immediately. Um, the school district has uh, expressed some interest in potentially expanding uh, some sort of joint use down there uh, of what I'll call the motor pool and public works facilities. Um, we agree that that might, that in the long term that would probably be best for the residents of Elmhurst, um, but that's something that'll probably take a couple of years to iron out. In the short term, that, and that's what I'll call phase two. So in the short term, and I think both parties have agreed, let's see what we can do to move that storage that they're currently using it for offsite and allow us to start digging as soon as possible. That's phase one. Um, as it relates to that, uh, right now, um, the school district feels for it to be an equitable swap there needs to be a, um, an appraisal done of the land that they would be giving up and compare that to an appraisal of the land that they would be utilizing. And if there's a, a cost difference or a value difference, um, they would expect to be made whole. That's the kind of the handshake agreement at this point. Um, no issues with that. The uh, school district has engaged with someone to um, provide an appraisal and they figure that'll be done in the next week or so. So that's current status of Brian. As it relates to Jackson, uh, there's two other properties uh, that the city is proposing be utilized for uh, floodwater mitigation. Those involve dual use projects at Jackson Grade School and then at York High School. Uh, we're in receipt of a letter from Dave Moyer expressing board's wishes 
and these were reconfirmed by uh, Ms. Bastido Wednesday night, which is that the Jackson and York High School projects are on hold pending their or per their request um, until they're ready to discuss them. Um, they've said they want to see how the Madison project turns out and want to see how the Madison project performs before they will entertain additional projects at Jackson and York High School. We have given them a standing offer um, to come and present to their board at any time they so choose so we can further explain the Jackson project and the York High School project. They are in receipt of all uh, information regarding those two projects and we've told them we're at the starting line on that, we're ready to go um, as soon as you're ready to discuss it. But um, per their request, those two projects are put on hold. That's school district. Before I go on to park district, any questions from uh, Alderman? Alderman Levin. Uh, when you say that we're ready to go, are we proceeding with engineering on those two sites that are on hold, or are we on hold? Uh, we're, we're on hold. I would say that our next step would be to go to engineering. We're prepared to go to engineering, but we're, not, we're reluctant to do so without permission or indication that uh, they would agree to this. So for example, a, a good example would be uh, Bryan Junior High. They, uh, they, they're pretty heavily committed to that one and have said so publicly, so we're probably more comfortable spending dollars to that. What I meant ready to go is we're as prepared as we're going to get to present the information and let them know how the project is and answer all of their questions. There's no more information we can gather on those projects um, and have told them that we'll present to them. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments relating to uh, flood water mitigation in schools? Okay, uh, on to the Park District. Uh, as Council is aware, um, we have uh, five projects as it relates to the Park District and um, at one point we thought we were going to move and get all five done at once, um, but we run into some problems. So about a month and a half ago, two months ago, we decided to split these projects up and attack them one at a time. Um, the two that we are closest on by far is York Commons and Golden Meadows. As far as it relates to York Commons, um, probably the majority of the conversation we had with Park District on Wednesday night was regarding the shutoff valve. Um, Council is aware, and I think at our last council meeting, uh, Christopher Burke made a presentation that um, in his opinion there's not a need for a shutoff valve. Um, certainly uh, in a 100 year event, uh, which is what everything's designed for, um, but also in a 500 year event, um, it would operate without a valve, much like the quarry does. Uh, it's a weir system, so if something gets too high, in this case, the, uh, the uh, stormwater uh, detention pond in front of the um, York Commons would uh, overflow to the west onto York Road. And uh, um, Burke has said that uh, there's um, uh, while there certainly will be significant overflow during a 500 year event that it does not add to anybody's problems downstream um, during a 500 year event we all have big problems um, and that's kind of and, and we're going to show some uh, some uh, data that supports that up on the screen in just a minute um, long story short and uh, um, mr rogers read the statement uh, here at public forum it's the same statement that he read at the beginning of the meeting um, park district um, is sticking to their claim that uh, um, their concern is safety for the folks downstream. Um, and uh, uh, I, don't, I don't see them moving off of their, their demand for a valve. Um, the, uh, we also discussed there's an opportunity to dig one side of the pond a little deeper, uh, one side of the detention area, I should say, a little deeper that would uh, actually address 500 year events, even though that wasn't the original conversation. Um, I believe at that time, Park District said they would not, they actually huddled a little bit and then, then informed us that they would not entertain um, us mitigating to a 500 year event and preferred the valve option. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the city then, and, and uh, uh, Alderman Kennedy and Alderman Mulliner attended the event uh, attended the uh, committee meeting on behalf of council. Um, and uh, we explained to council, or we explained to our concerns to the park district about adding additional liability, not only adding it a complication with a valve, but that um, you could increase liability, potentially increase liability. Those are indications from our attorney that if you introduce this valve, you could potentially increase liability. And we have uh, Burke Engineering 
a very well-respected engineering group saying that it's not needed. So as a result, during this meeting, the city asked the park district to get a, uh, to get a letter or some sort of feedback from V3, their engineer, that uh, basically counteracts or contradicts, uh, 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 contradicts what um, Burke is telling us, which is that this, uh, this valve is not needed. Um, so uh, the park district seemed willing to entertain that. Um, we haven't seen anything yet. We're actually gonna send a follow-up letter to further clarify um, our request on that. That'll go out in the next day or so. Um, and uh, I think that's it as it relates to Park District. Before we, we have a little, some additional information um, to share with Council, is there any other questions anybody has as it relates to uh, the Park District uh, uh, participation uh, that evening? Alderman Wagner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to repeat back to you what I think I heard you say regarding the operation of the, the actual uh, check valve, the large 48 inch, four foot diameter check valve. In a 500-year event, and we have the check valve, it will shut off the flow of water into the York Commons area, and then what happens to that water that's in the pipe? The water in the pipe stays still, and any water that's being collected up in Crescent starts filling up. Starts filling up, okay. And Crescent fills up in a 100-year flood, so it's bad to begin. Some parts of Crescent, the, the, the parts that we're addressing so actually fill up a little affected. sooner. So there's residents affected? Yes. I believe so, yes. And if the uh, check valve is successfully taken out of the IGA, we will um, design a weir system along with digging one side of it a little bit deeper to account for the 500-year flood. But let's say it's a 600-year flood and it does use, utilize the weir. That water will flow into York Street. Yes? Uh, yes. Okay. That's, that's what you were describing earlier, correct? Yeah. I, so we, this check valve, if I actually putting it in operation affects the people on Crescent. As opposed to not putting it in, it won't affect anybody because the water will actually funnel out to York Road. Is that what I heard you say? That's what our engineers are telling us. That's what our engineers that, are that telling us. That is correct. Us. We have not heard from the Park Board's engineering? No. The but I thought they actually agreed with our engineers as well. Well, I, I don't actually, you know, there's so many facts and figures floating around. I don't think that the, um, to the best of my knowledge, I don't think either engineering group has disagreed on any figure. What I heard in the meeting, just to answer your question, uh, two things. One is to correct uh, if I misstated. Um, we do have an option of uh, the, the proposed stormwater detention right now is for a 100-year flood, a 100-year event, I should say, um, a 500-year event, which is, you know, in theory, the probability is there's two-tenths of a percent of that flood happening in an entire century is what we're talking about. But in that case, um, there is an option for the city to dig one lobe of this, art, th th this uh, detention area just a little bit deeper and accommodate for the 500-year event. But the indications from the Park District is they wouldn't, they wouldn't entertain <laughs> allowing us to do that on their property. Could you repeat that, that last step? I missed it. Uh, we have a, the, the, the pond, or the, the detention area as designed right now is designed for a 100-year event. And after a 100-year event, it would overflow into York Street. Um, what we heard was that the Park District was concerned during a 500-year event or a 100-plus year event, um, water could overflow into the street and possibly affects homes downstream. And we have an option to uh, alter the digging a little bit and, and add a little more water to the detention area and eliminate overflow uh, that they're concerned about, but the park district uh, huddled and then told us they wouldn't consider allowing that. What about the weir? Where does the water go? Well, the, the, the weir is what we're proposing for the 100-year uh, capacity storm that we designed to. It, it does what you said. It's, uh, it's a low corner on one side of that detention area, and ultimately when it fills up, it spills into York Street. And the, what our engineers have told us, and you'll see, is that there's um, a negligible impact, neg negligible uh, with, when compared to a 500-year event, water's gonna be everywhere anyway, 
uh, according to our engineers, during a 500-year event, even if water spills over on New York, it's not going to affect any other homes that aren't already seriously affected <coughs> by a 500-year event. Does that make sense? Oh, real quick. Absolutely. Just um, as the mind wanders here listening, um, has the park board come back with any uh, facts, figures, absolutes that this uh, valve will save the residents on Crescent somehow? Or do I, they just not care about the residents on Crescent? I, I think the, um, the park board was very specific saying that they, um, their engineer agrees that during certain events, water would overflow out of the detention area onto York Street. Their engineer agrees with that. Our engineer agrees with that. Um, their engineer also agrees that if they put a valve in that shuts off at some point, it's going to reduce the overflow into the street. That's, that's what they're sticking with. <clears throat> now, it, we, I think, can agree if you put in a valve, water is going to stop overflowing at some point. Our point is, our point that we tried to make to them in our meeting was, uh, yes, we know it will overflow, and our engineer, and we had actually a, a Burke representative in the audience, our engineers tell us that there is no additional impact to any homes downstream. And the concern being that a mechanical pump is more complicated and has an opportunity to fail. And it's, and it's, mechanical valve. when I say pump? mechanical valve has more of an opportunity to fail um, and it's more costly to the residents of Elmhurst. That was, that was the conversation. Nothing more at the moment. Any, uh, Alderman Mulliner. Can I just, uh, following up on that just for a second, Alderman Wagner, one of the questions you asked was what does that valve do? When they shut that valve at the 100 year flood, the water is going to back up on the crescent. Okay, I just want to make that clear. The water is not going to continue down the pipe. It's not going to go any place. It's going to stay on Crescent. And they stated that. They, they agreed with that. The fact is the water is not going into our retention area. It's going to stay on Crescent. So our, our thought was let's continue to move the water as much as possible and let's just lower a little bit more of the de retention area and let the water sit in there rather than the other way around. And I know Alderman Kennedy has a lot more to add when he shows some of these drawings. So. Any additional comments? Uh, let me wrap up with uh, where the, and, and then we've got some more information to show about uh, um, your comments. Uh, but let me wrap up where the remainder of the projects are with the Park District. Um, we've got another project at uh, Golden Meadows that uh, helps the homes on Pine and Avon and those streets there. Um, the, as, I, as I stated, uh, the committee and council elected to break these up into individual projects because we seem to have sticking points on individual projects. Um, as it relates to that, um, Park District uh, was pretty clear. They sent us a letter mid-November, Jim? Yes. Mid-November, the Park District sent us a pretty clear letter mid-November stating what the requirements were from them or their expectations in terms of a, a, a participation or a partnership. Participation is probably better. Um, uh, of the remaining sites. Uh, for Golden Meadows, um, the Park District is going, we, we've agreed that there's going to be some process to do a, um, an appraisal of the property, and then the Park District is asking for one and a half times the value of, they're asking for a check for one and a half times the value of that property. Uh, and then we would, um, uh, assuming, and, and this is, th that, that actual proposal is before uh, Alderman Kennedy's uh, Public Works Committee right now and should be discussed in the next next two meetings. Um, that's where that's where uh, Golden Meadows is. Uh, assuming there comes th there's some resolution uh, between schools and uh, between parks and city on Golden Meadows, um, we would sign an IGA and then uh, because that's uh, that's property that's affected by DNR, the Park District would then petition DNR to allow that to happen. Uh, the other three projects are um, East End, Wild Meadows Trace, and Crest View Park in the north end of town. Those are the other three projects. Um, at our last, at two meetings ago for the Communication Committee, <coughs> Alderman Honquest um, asked the Park District to consider since the, um, um, the current use for all three sites that I mentioned are passive. Just call it open green space at this point. Uh, Alderman, Alderman uh, uh, Honquest 
requested the park district to consider not charging the city for that because the, the park district also in their letter to the city uh, has said that for any one of those three projects they're going to want to do an appraisal and then charge the city one and a half times the value of that property and uh, alderman honquest said well let's let's try to save the citizens of elmhurst money and not charge them for land they already own especially if it's going to be open space would you please reconsider not charging us for the land and allow us to use it for open space um, I sent a letter to that effect, a formal letter to that effect, to Park District to consider. Uh, the other thing that um, was not in the letter, but I added in our meeting and, and, and mentioned to Jim Rogers, um, is that if in the future, because there was some talk that there might be future development up at Crestview, if in the future the Park District decides to put a building or something on that site, um, we, would, we would figure out how to um, compensate them for any uh, backfill or anything they had to do and figure out how to continue to store the property. I'm sorry, store the water up there. So um, that's uh, your comments. We're going to continue to talk about it. Um, Golden Meadows is before committee and should be considered in the next two meetings. And the other three, we actually went back to Park District and asked them uh, not to charge us one and a half times the value of the property. If it's going to remain green and open space, let's just make it green open space. Okay. Any other comments or questions? <clears throat> um, is Howard gonna, are we, how do we turn this on? Uh, do you wanna do that now or during the resolution, the discussion? <coughs> the um, no, I think now's probably the, the time to do it. Um, and Howard will cue that up. As, uh, the, I agree. So, um, as I mentioned, uh, Alderman Kennedy, uh, Alderman uh, <coughs> Molliner and I were at this communications committee and uh, I would say, um, Probably 90% of the conversation with the park district had to do with the uh, had to do with the uh, golden Met uh, sorry your commons and the shutoff valve and uh, it can get uh, it can get a little complicated um, but uh, Alderman Kennedy is going to uh, uh, has worked with staff to pull together um, a, a little slideshow and uh, to add to it and we're starting. Okay, Howard, you ready to man it? All right, I'm going to turn it over to Alderman Kennedy at this point. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Howard, I may ask you to jump ahead and, and back, so if uh, you indulge me with that, I would appreciate it. <coughs> um, what we want to, again, talk about here is the, the project for your commons and the discussion as it relates to the shutoff valve. Uh, on the next slide, you'll see that um, what we're talking about here was initially a project of uh, $100,000 to put in that shutoff valve. Um, the mayor alluded to the fact if we were to make some modifications to the area, um, we could address what has been deemed as a safety concern from the park district and be able to do that for $56,000 or a net savings of $44,000. So pretty significant. If you, Howard would go ahead to uh, what I think is slide four, just skip by one. The, you know, just to give everybody an idea about this project. Again, we're taking water off of Crescent. We're conveying that to the detention area in York Commons, and that would assist us with the, um, as it's designed, for the 100-year storm. Anything in excess of 100 <coughs> years in its um, magnitude or flow rate would ultimately back up back onto Crescent, as was the original design. And that's the case whether or not the shutoff valve is there or not. It would, it would back up because of the way that it's designed and the restricted flow by the, by the very nature of the pipes. Down what would be in the um, southwest corner of the, uh, of the detention area, that is the overland flow route. So uh, at such point when the detention area overflows, it, water would flow into York Street by its very design any detention area that's ever been built has a, a pathway in and has a finite capacity, which means at some point, if, it's, if that capacity is exceeded, 
that water would move on as it would here in this uh, the southwest southwest point here. Again, this is for 10 acre feet of, uh, of storage. Uh, Howard, if you'd go back one, I want to highlight um, the data that was gathered by Christopher Burke and, and why I feel and why I think we as a committee should feel that the shutoff valve is not necessary <coughs> and by making a, a slight modification to increase the detention area by 10% uh, or from uh, 10 feet to 11 feet, you completely eliminate what those safety concerns are and uh, ultimately end up with a much better project. So if you look at uh, the first uh, column there, it has uh, the 10 acre feet um, difference in, in the various storms. And what this is, is the height of the water on York Street as during any one of these storms. And so the first thing I wanna highlight is you can see anywhere from the 100 year one hour up into the 500 year six hours, those are reduced um, levels of flooding in the street. And that's a direct benefit from the fact we're doing a detention area and all the improvements related to Crescent. So if you compare it to what we have today, just by the very nature of doing this project, we're gonna make things better on York Street, okay? The three items down at the bottom for the 12, 18, and 24 hour storms at the 500 year events are the are areas which, I, which it would appear the park district has the greatest amount of concern for the potential for flooding. Now, what do those numbers mean? You know, 0.09 feet is uh, a little over an inch and 0.18 is just over two inches. So it's something that's gonna happen at the 500 year um, time frame, we're worried about two inches of water in what will already be a pretty significant situation. So um, just to put that into perspective, if you look at now the, the, <coughs> the next column over that talks about having the valve, it is true all the way up into that 500 year, 24 hour event, it is better. Um, so I understand where the, the park district is going, but what I wanna highlight is in the third column, by adding that extra acre foot, we then um, not only achieve the same effect as having the valve, but you can see a few of those uh, are bolded uh, kind of in the bottom half, bottom third of the uh, exhibit here, which is even better than what it would be with the valve. So plainly stated, we are better off by not having the valve and by increasing the area of the detention area by one acre foot so that the safety issue is eliminated and we have absolutely no need to spend a hundred thousand dollars or the net um, forty four thousand dollar difference of a shut off, shut off valve versus just doing it via um, moving some earth around um, that increased area Howard if you go to the last slide would be um, created from what was originally slated to be the sand volleyball courts and uh, basketball court. Uh, we would, at, at any time, those um, improvements could be put in. Uh, we're just say, stating at this point, by, uh, by <coughs> manipulating this area, we could get to that 11 acre feet and provide ourselves with, you know, the benefit of eliminating the shutoff valve and having, uh, flows in those extreme events be um, better than where they are today and better where they are with a shutoff valve. So hope, uh, hope that was a quick synopsis of that and <clears throat> offer to answer any questions. I want to add a couple of things to it. One is um, this design right here in the area that's boxed out in gold um, <coughs> is the area that I mentioned could be dug it could be uh, excavated a little deeper to get to the 11 feet. The park district has approved this footprint with less excavation, this exact footprint uh, that will hold 10 acre feet. They've already appro approved this footprint. Um, it, it actually allows us to save more trees in doing this along York Road. So the footprint itself has been approved, but excavating down to 11 acre feet has not been approved, or is, is what they told us in the meeting they would not approve actually. Howard, can you go to the chart that has all those numbers on it? Um, I think one thing that uh, Alderman Kennedy, you left out is if you look at um, the 500 year, 
12 hour, 18 hour, and 24 hour event, and you look at all three columns going from left to right, regardless of what shows up there, while we understand there is, might be a concern, our engineers tell us that it doesn't matter what we do here, there's not one more home adversely impacted as it relates to this flooding, as it relates to those columns right there. So you're not saving another home, you're not, uh, you know, um, as you said, uh, Alderman Kennedy, I think 0.09 uh, uh, inches, or 0.09 feet, it's about an inch. A little more than an inch. Uh, point, point one eight inch, uh, 0.18 feet is a little more than two inches. Um, and that's, that's the safety claim, that's the issue. That's, that's right there, that's where the, the, the Park District uh, was saying their concern was. Um, I, I found the claim to be a bit specious based on the fact that if you look immediately to the east, we have a 17 foot, a 17 acre foot project proposed that would reduce um, the level of water on Washington, Washington Street alone eight inches. So if the concern is really, they don't wanna dump any more water into that area of town, and I said it in the meeting, you know, you have your answer, it's to allow us to put 17 acre feet, about the cheapest acre foot of storage we can find in the city of Elmhurst on that east lobe, but that was rejected. But I wanted to point that part out. Alderman Kennedy. Okay, you know, I just, you know, I personally, I don't really care when the discussion of the valve came into being. Certainly it was there at the very beginning when uh, some of the concerns were raised by the, by the residents on Cayuga, but I think this plainly highlights that the shutoff valve isn't needed. Um, during our meeting last week, uh, Commissioner Spaeth did um, talk about data and talk about flow rates as to what was gonna happen. You know, Howard, if you could pull up the, the picture again at that um, southwest corner of your commons um, and that, you know, basically concluding that those flow rates were of such magnitude that homes immediately adjacent would be in imminent danger. That's not the case, that's, you know, as we talked to Christopher Burke and his engineers, yes, there is increased flow rates, but those flow rates don't translate into imminent danger to um, properties in that area. And certainly as we talked about on the, uh, the, 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 um, the next page with the, the flood elevations don't, mm -hmm. don't equate to um, real, real danger. Um, I respectfully disagree with Mr. Uh, Spaeth. Um, Mr. Spaeth is not a licensed and certified civil engineer. I believe he is an engineer, but he's not an engineer like this. So I'm gonna go with the guy that uh, is nationally recognized and certified and, and done this type of work all over the country with, uh, with coming up with his conclusions. Um, one other thing I wanna highlight for everyone, uh, the Park District currently has detention areas at Plunkett, Barrens, and soon to be uh, Butterfield Parks. Not a single one of those has a shutoff valve. Um, so, you know, I question not the need for your comments, but then find it odd that you'd, you'd make a request for one in one area, but not be doing it for, uh, for your own project. <clears throat> so uh, just to add that piece, thanks. Um, all right. Uh I'm, uh, I wanted to have an opportunity to address this during our reports because I was at the meeting and have an opportunity to speak. Uh, at some point, we gotta <laughs> shift it over to, uh, to the meeting and back to the resolution. Alderman Mulliner. Let me just finish with one or two little statements on this particular project, just so everybody. One of the comment, one of the things is we mentioned that it's $44,000 net savings. That's on the first installation. That's when we're installing it. That's not including the long-term maintenance that there would be on a valve that's 48 inches. Uh, during our meeting, um, Commissioner Spaeth continued to tell us that we have multiple valves that are like this in the city. That is incorrect. We've checked with Public Works. We have some large valves, but they're not this type of valve. They're a different type of valve that does not require the type of maintenance that this type of valve would require. So I just want to make those two points just to make sure that everybody understands that it's not just that 44,000 and that maintenance is a different type of maintenance than we would be doing on any other type of valve we have in the city. Any other comments or questions? Alderman Wagner. Was it asked at the meeting, I wasn't there either, I apologize, uh, so I'll ask you, Mr. Mayor, was it asked at the meeting and maybe to Commissioner Spaeth himself um, where he was coming up with his data? Well, the data, he was using the same data that Alderman, that, that right there, those. Oh, he uh, was using Chris Burke's information? He was, that, and that's, yes. But well, they only have their own engineer. They do. 
And they're paying for that engineer? Are the residents of Elmhurst are paying for that engineer? Yes. I would assume, right? Interesting. So we haven't, I'm sorry, excuse me, yeah. follow up? Sure. So have we seen anything from the park board um, arguing or successfully arguing <coughs> their side that this would help our solution at York Commons? Do they have any data to Well, no. Um, Alderman Spaeth, um, you know. No, uh, Commissioner Spaeth. I'm sorry. I'm okay. jumping ahead of myself. Sorry, uh, Commissioner Spaeth. <laughs> um, Commissioner Spaeth um, uh, was referring to these numbers, but as I mentioned, uh, as, as, as during the meeting, um, the representatives from the city, myself, and uh, Mr. Kennedy and Mr. Moliner did ask uh, Commissioner Spaeth if he could get uh, something to help us to, to show to our legal group, hey, can you get V3 to say they support this or makes it better or, or what have you? And as I mentioned, I have a letter that I've written here, um, city, city Manager Grabowski and I. Um, it's more of the formal request. I know when things get sticky uh, like this, we don't like to get uh, lost. So we're, we're sending this in the next day or so. Yes, all of them. Yeah, so I just want to be clear. They're arguing from a point of a nice to have, basically, as opposed to showing us facts and figures. Um, I, I'll let fair. people draw their own conclusions on Would that. Would that one. be a fair statement from Alderman Wagner? Uh, I, I think Alderman Wagner can draw his own conclusions, but I think the, <laughs> the <coughs> council has been presented with enough inf multiple times of, uh, multiple times and information about how Shut off valve, uh, they don't believe is necessary. So. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Element 11. I'm just, I have some comments I want to make, but are we going to yes. be covering this under the actual yeah, I'm topic? trying to get out of it. Right. Uh, last thing I'll say before, because uh, this, this council will be considering uh, a resolution that relates directly to the IGA and the, um, and the valve. Last thing I'll say is um, while I believe that there's plenty of evidence to support um, that the uh, valve is not required. And while I believe that the cost um, is not only what has been shown, but the service and maintenance uh, of, of a valve if it gets put in, uh, and while I believe that, um, uh, that putting a valve in um, complicates a project, uh, one of the things Burke brought up was uh, you're gonna have people now saying just like if the valve goes in just like they do on the quarry, hey, did you push the button? Um, if there's no button to push, and there's no valve to open or close, you don't have to field that question. However, in summation, what I will say is, um, <laughs> while I think we can uh, discuss the finer points of all of this, um, to me it's pretty clear that regardless of what information we provide to the park district, they're pretty firm on this valve requirement. I don't believe that um, uh, any additional information is going to change their thinking. Um, and uh, the council and or uh, either the park district needs to consider uh, approving putting in this project without a valve or the uh, council has to consider putting in the project, spending the extra money, spending the long-term service and maintenance, consider a project with the valve. Um, I don't believe the park district is gonna change their mind. And um, while I am disappointed uh, and while I do not spend, um, I don't like uh, taxpayer, taxpayer dollars being spent frivolously, um, ultimately I default to truly my neighbors on Crescent. And let's um, figure out what we can do to help them. The facts are gonna be the facts. Uh, the, the, the citizens of Elmhurst can read all these facts later. Let's do what we need to do to get a project uh, going for these folks on Crescent. And that's my report. I will sum up. That is my report. I'll turn it over to City Manager Grabowski. Uh, just one item tonight. The, uh, this Thursday, the City College Commission meets at 4 p.m. This will be their third meeting, and so they're still getting their feet under them, but they, they have a very good agenda um, of items to discuss. Okay, any other reports? Alderman Bram. Just a question in regards to City Manager's uh, report. Um, are those agendas or are those meeting minutes um, available to the public to understand what is being discussed? Yes, they're all posted online on thank the you. city website. Okay, any other reports? I thank the council for their <laughs> indulgence on a rather unique uh, report. Um, on to agenda item nine ordinances, 9.1. Clerk Spencer, I'd ask you to read the ordinance. Okay. An ordinance authorizing an execution of a purchase and sale agreement of real property uh, at 293 Geneva. 
Elmhurst, Illinois. Elmhurst, Illinois. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I will, uh, to uh, put this before council, I'll entertain a motion to approve the ordinance as read. Motion by Alderman Mulliner, <coughs> second by Alderman York. Alderman Mulliner, any comments? Uh, just a real quick one for the public to know. This is a purchase of property that relates to flood mitigation. Uh, it's one of the processes that we're moving forward with uh, to help the flooding. As chairman, I'll say I think that goes for the next four items. Uh, okay. Um, any other comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll ask Clerk Spencer to please call the roll. York. Mulliner. Oh. Was first. I was he was first. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Mulliner. Aye. York. Aye. Toledo. Aye. Healy, absent. Levin. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Honquist, absent. Wagner. Aye. Joyder. Aye. Sabatino, absent. Leader. Aye. Dunn, absent. Graham. Aye. Polemski. Aye. Okay, it looks like 10 ayes, 0 nays, 4 absent. 10 I zero nays, motion passes, ordinance 0-03-2016 uh, is approved. On to uh, agenda item 9.2, Clerk Spencer, I'd ask you to read the ordinance. An ordinance authorizing the execution of a purchase and sale agreement of real property. Uh, this address is um, 684 South Washington. Elmhurst, Illinois. Elmhurst, Illinois. That's correct. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the ordinance as read. Motion by Alderman Kennedy, second by Alderman Deuter. Any comments? Clerk Spencer. Kennedy. Aye. Joyder. Aye. Sabatino, absent. Leader. Aye. Dunn, absent. Bram. Aye. Polumsky. Aye. York. Aye. Toledo. Aye. Healy, absent. Levin. Aye. Conquist, absent. Wagner. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Ten ayes, zero nays, four absent. 10 I's, 0 nays, motion carries. Ordinance 0-04-2016 is approved. On to agenda item 9.3. Clerk Spencer, I'd ask you to read the ordinance. An ordinance authorizing execution of a purchase and sale agreement for real property. The address of this property is 688 South Washington, Elmhurst, Illinois. Elmhurst, Illinois. Uh, uh, put this before council, ask for approval of the ordinance as read. Motion by Alderman Kennedy, second by Alderman Deuter. Uh, any comments? Seeing none, Clerk Spencer. Kennedy. Aye. Deuter. Aye. Sabatino, absent. Leader. Aye. Dunn, absent. Bram. Aye. Polemski. Aye. York. Aye. Toledo. Aye. Healy, absent. Levin. Aye. Conquist, absent. Wagner. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Ten ayes, zero nays, four absent. And I zero nays, motion carries. Ordinance 0-05-2016 is approved. Clerk Spencer, agenda item 9.4, please read the ordinance. An ordinance authorizing execution of a purchase and sale agreement <coughs> for real property. The address of this property is 692 South Washington. Uh, ask for, uh, put this before council, ask for a motion to approve the ordinance as read. Motion by Alderman Kennedy, second by Alderman Deuter. Uh, any comments? No comments, uh, Clerk Spencer. Kennedy. Aye. Deuter. Aye. Sabatino, absent. Leader. Aye. Dunn, absent. Bram. Aye. Polumsky. Aye. York. Aye. Toledo. Aye. Healy, absent. Levin. Aye. Conquist, absent. Wagner. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. 10 ayes, 0 nays, 4 absent. 10 ayes, 0 nays. Ordinance 0 06 2016 is approved. On to resolutions. Agenda item 10. 10.1. Clerk Spencer, I'd ask you to read the resolution. A resolution approving and authorizing the execution of an intergovernmental <coughs> agreement by and between the City of Elmhurst, Illinois, and Elmhurst Park District for the construction, operation, and maintenance of stormwater improvements in York Commons Park, Elmhurst, DuPage County, okay. Illinois. Uh, okay, to put this before council, I'll ask for a motion to approve the resolution as read. Amen. Motion by Alderman Kennedy, second by Alderman Deuter. Say, say it again. We'll change what we did last time. 
Has it been changed? It's not yes. X'd out? Correct. This is the new version of the City Council approved. Okay. Uh, the amended version. Okay. So just to remind Council, um, when this was before Council two meetings ago, um, there was a, uh, there was attached is the, uh, a copy of the IGA. I believe it's paragraph two, page two. Alderman Brand made a motion to remove the valve. Uh, that was supported by, I think, unanimously by Council. So you don't see a red line in here. Um, the draft of the IGA that is attached to this resolution has had uh, all reference to that removed, just to be clear. So as it sits before us right now, no valve. All right, uh, Alderman Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, appreciate Alderman Bram spearheading that two meetings ago to have the uh, reference to the valve removed. Uh, I would suggest that we as a council move forward and adopt uh, this resolution and um, basically put the ball firmly back in the court of the Park District. Um, the letter that uh, Mayor Morley and City, G City Manager Grabowski are going to uh, send tomorrow uh, puts in a request that uh, ultimately B B3 come back with the engineering uh, reasoning behind the necessity of a, uh, of a shutoff valve. I think what, you, what we saw here tonight that it really is not necessary, so I look forward to seeing that. Uh, I unfortunately also share the viewpoint of the mayor that uh, in the end, um, the park board will probably still require us to put the valve in, and so we'll have to decide how we want to approach that. Um, very unfortunate. It's a waste of money. It's uh, a waste ultimately of uh, not only money now, but money in the future to maintain that valve. And um, I, I don't see how a group that's... Uh, put forth with sound engineering um, judgment and information chooses to go away from that. And that's part of the reason why I want to see, I personally want to see V3 come back and say why this is required. So I'd like uh, <clears throat> like the support for this uh, resolution, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me if we're back here in a few weeks talking about it again. Thank you. Alderman Levin. Uh, I may repeat, I have three points or so, I may repeat something. I, I do think that, I acknowledge that the Park District acted responsibly, responsibly when they waved off on a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment that they said they didn't need anymore. Um, but I don't see how that equates to a carte blanche to tell us then that we now have to put in a valve that costs 44000 or or 100000 or whatever it is. Good public policy says you evaluate each expenditure on its own, um, and I don't, I don't see the justification. From everything I've heard, and I'm not on the Public Works Committee, but I've listened to what's been said, I've read everything that came out, and it seems quite undisputed that the valve isn't needed. I don't understand how we can ignore clear recommendations from professional engineers. Um, you know, the point has been made that if you introduce a mechanical component such as a valve, it can fail. I, I think we had a situation on Geneva in one of the floods where the pump failed. It would be nice if there was a solution that didn't require mechanical uh, uh, components. Um, we've talked about the liability. I don't know why we would pass something that only increases liability to us as a city. The park district always tells us that they're the custodian of the parks and they have to do what's best for the parks. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. I've never disputed that. Um, the, but the park district has never expressed any concern that I've heard about how this valve affects park district land or park district operations. The park district representatives that have I've watched on the tapes that have appeared at the Communication Committee meeting has spent a lot of time, a lot of time talking about what's good for non-park district land, what's good for residents who are downstream. Well, we're the city of Elmhurst. We're the ones that take the heat for the flooding. We're the ones that have spent a million dollars on engineering studies. We're the ones that have to answer to the public for solving this flooding problem. If they're, if, for some unforeseen reason, if it came out down the future that we were wrong and a valve was needed, I'm sure we would undertake efforts to put in that valve. But I, it, when you, I don't know if it was a slip of the tongue when you said Alderman Spaeth, but they're not the Alderman. We're the Alderman. Uh, the Park District is putting its 
knows into some place it doesn't belong. This is not park district business. Now, I'm a resident here too, and I've tried to be careful not to speak critically of the other two public units of government or units of government that we've asked for to help the city and the residents. Um, but I think we need to apply a little common sense. I'm not pleased with the park district holding the city and the residents hostage on this issue and extorting a valve from taxpayers as a price for providing flooding relief. I still can't understand why the park district withheld use of the east lobe, but that's for another day, another year, or another decade. Um, I'm sorry that uh, as a resident that this is the position they're taking. I wish I could understand it. If they come up with an explanation that shows there's a reason, common sense, it affects the park district land, I'm going to vote in favor of that valve. Today, no. Additional comments? Alderman Bram. Thank you. Um, and Howard, if you can go to the slide with the numbers, then please, thank you. So I said it before, I'll say it again. I mean, I, I do applaud the Park District, and Alderman Levin alluded to this, of trying to um, take on, I guess, going above and beyond, I view it, uh, responsibility or accountability to ensure that, you know, nobody else is impacted by this detention area. Um, but like I said weeks ago, it falls on the shoulders of the city of Elmhurst and therefore the elected body, the city council. Um, that accountability is all up to us. Um, one of the things I'll just remind everybody is we as a council has set the policy the first few months of discussing the flooding issues in Elmhurst is that our goal was to provide 100 year flood detention. If you look, and this is the why I asked for the slide to be brought up, if you look, we're going above and beyond already in this area. That is our policy as a council. We're already overachieving, at least from what the modeling shows us. I don't think we need to take any additional steps in regards to digging this detention area any further down. I don't think we need to worry about a valve. I heard from Burke. Um, I agree wholeheartedly with Burke in regards to a valve's not needed. We have self-throttling with the size of the pipe that's going into this detention area. You know, we have a weir um, in place if it does need to overflow. The two areas that would be impacted, we thought it through, our engineers have thought it through, and we need to move forward. We need to do what's right by the residents and move forward. A lot of residents have come here and said, we're tired of the talk, let's move forward. I wholeheartedly agree, we're right there at the goal line, let's cross the goal line and put shovels in the ground and make this a great project for all residents who surround this area. Alderman Toledo. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, a question to start. A number of people have alluded to the fact that if we um, uh, approve this resolution tonight, which does not include a valve, um, that there is some time in the future when we may have an opportunity to vote on this resolution again. Can you please explain that? Because from what I, the information I've been provided tonight, if we vote on this without a valve, we have 100% certainty that the park district will not approve the IGA. So to me, I need to understand what the next steps might be before I can make a decision. <clears throat> one, one second, Alderman Toledo. Yeah, I, I think it, 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 we would expedite the process, but I think what would probably happen is that a second report would have to come out of Public Works Committee, um, in essence saying final information received by committee is Park District has said no to the IGA. Um, our report will say, the report would say something in the nature of put the valve back in, and then we would expedite it as quickly as we could, and that's how we would vote on it a second time. But if it becomes a resolution, it's a resolution. It, 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 uh, resolution or ordinance? Resolution. Um, we can change, we have the authority, City Council has the authority to change any resolution, ordinance, or anything down the road. Uh, but I asked Don, procedurally, we would probably have one committee meeting and come back up here. So um, two weeks or 
however the schedule allowed after uh, if we get an official response out of Park District. I, I don't know what the, that's assuming the Park District gives us a response. Um, I, I think Mr. Rogers stated they're willing to move forward with the valve. Um, I, you know, if they could, they could let it sit with, without a response. They're not, they're not obligated to respond to us. That's uh, all I have. That's oh, all okay. I have then. I'm sorry. <clears throat> All right, any additional comments or questions? Alderman Bram. You know, on the tails of those, those concerns, I would just encourage everyone sitting up here is to vote what you think is the right thing, not worrying about what the consequences may or may not be by another government body. Whatever the right thing is, if you feel the valve is needed, if you feel the valve is not needed, vote according to that and don't worry about what another government body is going to decide even though we may want to predict and look in that um, crystal ball, we have no idea what they're going to say or when they're going to get to it. Let's move forward with what we believe is the correct way to go. Alderman Wagner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well done, uh, Alderman Bram. I would also like to encourage the council to consider this council never agrees on anything that it doesn't, <laughs> isn't backed up and supports our argument for that resolution, ordinance, report, whatever it is. We're being asked, hypothetically, if this goes through and we approve the report as is, and it does go into that nebulous park board and they stick with the valve, they have no data to support it being there. They don't even have an engineer to agree with it. So I would say that's not a way to run a board, let alone a park district, but I would seriously remember the fact that this council doesn't approve anything without its facts and figures. Any additional comments? Okay, Clerk Spencer, I ask you to call the roll on agenda item 10.1. Kennedy. Point of order, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. Yep. Just to clarify, when we're voting here, we're talking about voting for the IGA without the valve in there. That's correct. We have, a, that back. we have a resolution. Uh, I'll call it a draft IGA because it doesn't have dates, et cetera, in here. Um, but yeah, uh, you, you are correct. It has the Removal of the uh, valve reference uh, from two meetings ago. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So that's what we're voting on. Clerk Spencer. Kennedy. My vote is, my vote is aye. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Deuter. Aye. Sabatino, absent. Leader. Aye. Dunn, absent. Bram. Aye. Polemski. Aye. York. Aye. Toledo. Aye. Healy is absent. <coughs> Levin. Aye. Conquest absent. Wagner. Aye. Mulliner. My vote is aye. Ten <laughs> ayes, zero nays, four absent. Ten ayes, zero nays, motion carries. Agenda item 10.1 um, is approved. Um, it's, uh, well, yeah. it's uh, your Commons uh, IGA without a valve in it. On to agenda item 10.2. I'll ask Clerk Spencer, please read the resolution. A resolution approving and authorizing the execution of an agreement by and between the City of Elmhurst and the Illinois Department of Transportation regarding the resurfacing of First Street from West Avenue to Willow Road in the City of Elmhurst, Illinois. Okay, uh, to approve this resolution, I'll uh, entertain a motion. Uh, I'll, to put this before Council, I'll entertain a motion to approve the resolution as read. Motion by Alderman Deuter, second by Alderman Kennedy. Uh, Alderman Deuter. <laughs> Alderman Kennedy, Alderman Deuter. Sorry. <coughs> she had her hand up first, Jim. Uh, that's <laughs> duly noted, Mr. Mayor. I'm happy to, to yield to the chairman for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Deuter. Chairman Kennedy. A little slow on the uptake there. Um, this is a, a document that we're, we are required to uh, we are required to pass a resolution now for uh, any projects that the uh, where IDOT has a financial participation in ahead of the project uh, occurring uh, formalization. I got to believe there must have been somewhere at some time where things didn't go right, and now that the, the state has come back and said you got to do this resolution up front so everybody understands what's being committed to. So um, it's a procedural requirement. Um, makes sense because we want to do the project, so I'm going to support it. Okay. 
Yeah, comments or questions? Alderman Bram. I just want to make a comment. This was also a report tonight, so we, uh, in the report, I believe we mentioned a suspension of rules, so therefore we don't have to make the motion to do that. But that was tied to a report earlier tonight just to make sure people understand the link between the resolution and the report. Okay. Any additional comments or questions? Clerk Spencer. Deuter. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Honquist. Absent. Wagner. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Sabatino. Absent. Leader. Aye. Dunn. Absent. Aye. Graham. Aye. Polemski. Aye. York. Aye. Toledo. Aye. Healy. Absent. Three. Levin. Aye. Get everybody. Okay. Did I get everybody? I'm not sure here. Oh, I know what I did. Ten eyes, zero nays, four <coughs> absent. Ten eyes, zero nays, motion carries. Uh, other business. Any other business? <coughs> Obtain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Alderman York, second by Alderman Mulliner. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned, thank you.